The solar system appears to be a perfectly tuned mechanism when viewed at large. By contrast, there's a real realm of chaos between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. This is where hundreds of thousands of small celestial objects whiz around space in all sorts of directions, occasionally crossing other objects' orbits. They sometimes get in each other's way and produce thousands of shards and bits on collision. With this area of space highly changeable, it is hardly possible to predict what it will look like in the distant future. Of course, we'll be talking about the main asteroid belt, one of the most changeable and mysterious areas in the solar system. Today, over 300,000 small celestial bodies found here have been given names and numerical designations. Interestingly, their overall number may well reach over a million. The starting point of studying the asteroid belt may be defined at 1801, when astronomers spotted a mysterious object in the sky after a long and hard search for the fifth planet. In terms of its parameters, it appeared to be a planet, but happened to be so small that even the most advanced telescopes of the day couldn't distinguish its disk. The researchers saw the newly discovered object as a bright dot like a star. It was dubbed Ceres, and very soon similar celestial objects of this class were discovered. A new term had to be introduced to refer to them. These unusual astronomical bodies came to be called asteroids, which literally means star-like. Apart from asteroids, this area in the solar system contains great amounts of cosmic dust. While slowly spiraling up, its tiny particles scatter sun rays and create a very faint white glow. This glow is referred to as zodiacal light. Interestingly, in equatorial areas of the Earth, it can be seen with the naked eye. For a long time, the following hypothesis used to be widely accepted. Asteroid belt objects were thought to be debris of a destroyed planet. However, today, this assumption doesn't really hold water. First of all, the mass total of all the objects of the main asteroid belt is too small, and equals just 3 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms, or 4% the mass of the Moon even allowing for the fact that the greater part of asteroids would have left the belt a while ago, the total mass of the rocky debris still falls short of making up an object with dimensions comparable to those of a proper planet. Secondly, estimates show that large celestial objects cannot form in this area of the solar system on account of Jupiter's gravitational influence. Mathematical modeling revealed that the largest formations in the asteroid belt have never measured over a thousand kilometers in diameter. The gravitational influence of their mighty giant neighbor rendered their orbits highly unstable, which made potential protoplanets collide and disintegrate into smaller bits. Traces of these collisions can still be observed. Most objects of the main belt group together to form the so-called asteroid families, populations of asteroids of similar makeup and of the same origin. It is thought that they formed as a result of such destructive collisions. The borders of the main asteroid belt are rather blurred. Most of the objects making it up lie within 2.06 to 3.27 astronomical units from the Sun. These boundaries are predefined by Jupiter's tidal forces and are referred to as Kirkwood Gaps. Any celestial objects getting into these zones experience the massive gas giant's strong gravitational influence, which destabilizes their orbits. This is the reason why the space object count here is considerably lower than beyond. Kirkwood gaps can be found not only on the conventional borders of the belt, but inside it too. Two of the most clearly defined gaps lie 2.5 and 2.82 astronomical units away from the Sun. The asteroid belt is also conventionally divided into two large areas, inner and outer belt. The border between them is a Kirkwood gap with a radius measuring 2.5 astronomical units, which coincides with the highest orbital resonance with Jupiter. It's in the outer part of the main belt that the largest object in this area of the solar system is situated, Ceres. This celestial object used to be thought a planet, then an asteroid, but eventually, in 2006, 
it was given the status of a dwarf planet. It was possible to do so thanks to the fact that Ceres has a spherical shape, unlike the absolute majority of the other objects in the belt. Its diameter measures around 940 kilometers and its mass 9.4 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms, which incidentally accounts for around a third of the overall mass of the asteroid belt. This makes Ceres approximately 6,000 times lighter than our planet. The furthest point of the dwarf planet's orbit from the Sun is 2.9 astronomical units. When Ceres is at its perihelion, the distance to our system's center measures around 2.5 astronomical units. At this point, the planetoid's surface temperature may reach 239 Kelvin or 33 degrees Celsius below zero, although its average temperature is noticeably smaller, at just 167 Kelvin or 106 degrees Celsius below zero. The celestial body is thought to be made up of a rocky core enveloped in a cryomantle around 100 kilometers thick. Water ice accounts for up to a half of the dwarf planet's volume, or 20 to 30 percent of its mass. The inner part of the belt harbors the largest and most massive known asteroid in the solar system, Vesta. The object's average diameter measures roughly 525 kilometers and its mass is around 2.6 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms, which is almost four times as little as that of Ceres. The asteroid's orbit is rather elongated, with its aphelion 2.57 astronomical units and its perihelion around 2.15 astronomical units away. It takes the celestial body 3.6 Earth years to complete a full orbit around the Sun. Vesta is also remarkable for being the only asteroid visible to the naked eye. It can be seen not only on account of its impressive dimensions, but also thanks to its comparatively light surface that reflects about 42% of light shed on it. Besides, the minimal distance between Vesta and the Earth isn't that great. At just 177 million kilometers or 1.18 astronomical units. It is assumed that Vesta is a fully fledged planet in terms of its inner makeup. It appears to have a metallic core made up of nickel and iron, as well as a rocky mantle. The surface temperature of the asteroid is currently fluctuating between minus 190 and minus 20 degrees Celsius, but it used to be much warmer in the past. Dark areas to be seen on the surface in the Western Hemisphere are highly likely to be basalt plains. Such terrain features may have formed as a result of volcanic activity or collision events with massive astronomical bodies. The most outstanding geological feature on the asteroid is the giant impact crater referred to as Rhea Silvia, whose diameter measures up to 500 kilometers and its depth is around 25,000 meters. The second largest mountain in the solar system is situated at its center, towering higher than 22 kilometers. Impressively, the crater's diameter almost equals Vesta's size. It looks like the asteroid collided with a really large object at some point in the past. The collision would have produced not only the Rhea Silvia crater, but also a great number of small bits which are now classified as the family of Vesta's numerous asteroids. The family counts over 15,000 objects, making up around 5% of all celestial bodies of the main belt known to science today. It is posited that most asteroid families came to be as a result of destructive collisions of two large celestial objects. Sometimes the debris are mutually attracted by gravity forces, which usually blend them into a new astronomical object. However, it would have lost its monolithic nature, and sometimes astronomers informally call such formations rubble piles. For example, Sylvia, one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt, seems to fall into this category of celestial bodies. Its parameters are 384 by 262 by 232 kilometers, with a mass 1.5 times 10 to the power of 19 kilograms. This makes the asteroid's average density just 20% higher than that of water. Estimates show that cavities may account for 25 to 60% of its volume. 
It takes Sylvia 6.5 years to complete a full orbit around the Sun. The object's orbit's furthest point from the center of the system is up to 3.7 astronomical units. In its perihelion, Sylvia gets as close to the Sun as 3.2 astronomical units. It is assumed that some bits of debris left after a collision are not attracted to other bits but rather become satellites of the new celestial body. Sylvia is known to have two such companions, Romulus, with a diameter measuring 18 kilometers, and Remus, measuring around 7 kilometers. Their makeup hasn't been studied yet, and it is highly likely that these objects are not monolithic either. Besides, Sylvia may theoretically have smaller satellites as well, which haven't been detected yet. Pallas is another remarkable object in the asteroid belt. It was discovered back in 1802 right after Ceres, and is the second largest asteroid in the belt. The average diameter of the celestial body is around 512 kilometers, and its mass is roughly 2 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms, which is approximately 25% less than that of Vesta. The asteroid's orbit is exceptionally elongated and tilts to the ecliptic plane at 35 degrees. That is the reason why the astronomical body is so hard to investigate with probes. As for its orbital period, it takes Pallas around 4.6 years to orbit the Sun, in the course of which the distance to the system's center changes more than one and a half times. With its perihelion 2.1 astronomical units, its aphelion is 3.4 astronomical units away. Pallas's surface is widely pockmarked with craters, much more so than the larger Ceres or Vesta. Studies of the chemical composition of the asteroid's surface reveal that it mostly consists of silicate rocks with small amounts of iron and water. Just like Vesta, this celestial body is thought to be one of the few potential protoplanets that are still around, which means that studying it may yield important information about the formation process of the solar system. Unlike Vesta, most asteroids cannot be seen either with the naked eye or through amateur telescopes. One of these elusive objects is called Interamnia, admittedly one of the most mysterious objects of the main asteroid belt. This is an irregular shaped asteroid with parameters 362 by 348 by 310 kilometers and its mass accounts for roughly 1.2% of the overall mass of all objects in the belt. In spite of its relatively large size, however, Interamnia remains largely understudied. One of the difficulties thwarting scientific progress here is the asteroid's dark surface, which absorbs around 93% of light shed on it. Interamnia falls into the exceptionally rare spectral class F, which is a subclass of carbonaceous asteroids. Research of its reflection shows that the color of the celestial body's surface is even which means that Interamnia hasn't experienced big collisions for quite a long time. Interamnia's density is not that great, at just twice that of water. The asteroid is thought to be made up of a hard rocky core enveloped in a thick layer of ice. The surface is covered with great amounts of fine dark dust. It takes Interamnia around 5 years and 4 months to complete a full orbit around the Sun. Its aphelion is on the opposite side from four largest objects of the main belt, and the distance from the asteroid to the Sun varies from 2.5 to 3.5 astronomical units. In theory, Interamnia's orbit crosses the trajectories of such large objects as Ceres and Pallas, but estimates show that chances of their colliding with each other are small. There are millions of objects in the main belt, from dwarf planets to tiny meteoroids the size of a cobblestone. However, distances between them measure thousands upon thousands or even millions of kilometers. That is why a spacecraft crossing the belt would be running an almost negligible risk of getting hit by any astronomical body. Still, mathematical modeling shows that around once every 10 million years, some remarkable collisions take place in this part of the solar system that produce new debris. Even though a manned mission to asteroids in the main belt will not be in the pipeline for a long while, some of the asteroids there have been studied with the help of interplanetary space probes. 
For example, the Dawn probe carried out observations of Ceres and Vesta in the period from 2011 to 2016. Quite recently, the space probe Lucy blasted off the surface of the Earth. Even though its main goal is the so-called Jupiter Trojans, the spacecraft will approach the object known as Donald Johansson in the main belt and take its pictures in 2025. Also, the launch of the Psyche project is scheduled for July 2022, with the largest known metallic asteroid of the main belt as its target. Within the mission, the probe is planned to reach its destination by early 2026 and remain in the asteroid belt for at least 21 months while studying the asteroid's terrain, makeup and magnetic field. Small though they may be, asteroids are important, both from the scientific and practical point of view. Some main belt objects are real treasure troves, dating back to the early stages of the solar system formation. Studying them will give us clearer insights into processes of how planets and other celestial bodies form. And in the future, asteroids will make sources of materials for space exploration. We don't know when we will be ready for this. But every new rocket launched into space brings the space era slightly closer. And every new like you give us brings a nice new video closer. Let's keep in touch.